Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with a Kaisa updated complete guide and now we are really going all over the country to cover like literally almost every single AD carry. Well, maybe not literally, but literally all the like top tier ADCs I believe I have made an updated complete guide onto. The last time I updated them was on patch 2.4 and now 2.6 slash 2.6a slash 2.6b is kind of where like patch 2.6 in general, like the patch 2.6 series in general is where I'm updating all my complete guides because a lot of the times the build evolves over time. Now Kaisa's build itself hasn't actually changed all that much. We'll go through it uh, a little uh, in a little bit, but um, Kaisa recently got both buffed and nerfed. Actually, in, in patch uh, I think 2.5a, I think her Q got nerfed to do a lot less isolation damage and just. Um, less base damage in general, but in 2.6a, she did get her AD ratio buffed by 5% on her Q, as well as her attack speed buffed on her E. Now, honestly, Kaisa was at like was like the top tier ADC for like basically almost an entire year from like when the game released until like recently. So almost one entire year, Kaisa was pretty much the best um, ADC for a long time. She is my most played. Um, ADC and also my highest mastery ADC. Currently, I'm at mastery six um, at the moment. But um, anyways, as usual for our updated uh, complete guide, we will not be going through the um, skills and leveling order. Instead, I'm gonna actually um, leave the link for the previous complete guide that I did, and you guys can refer to it over there in the interest of time. Also, will be put up in the cards above. So instead, we're just gonna jump straight into the build. Alright, so this is going to be the build at the start of the game and then uh, the build changes um, later. There is a final build. So I'm just going to give a look at the final build first. So this is what the final build will look like. Bay of the Room King, a boot, uh, and, and, and a boot and an enchant of course. The uh, Infinity Edge, Runan's Hurricane, Maul Reminder, and Garden Angel. There is a variation to this build which is going for Solar Recharge Blade instead and I will explain it a little bit later on. But we'll first get into the start of the game build. So you start off with a long sword, and on your first back, if you can afford it, buy a BF sword. If you can't afford it, buy a moral remind uh, not moral reminder, buy, buy an executioner's calling. So basically your first three items will always be moral reminder, executioner's calling, and long sword. If you get a kill or two before the dragon, you will be able to get these three items which will, which will give you your Q evolve. But most of the time you probably will not. Either that or on dragon spawn, you will get your longsword, but you don't really want to back to buy a longsword when your team is fighting for dragon or, or rift herald most of the time. So after you get these first three, first three items, you get your crew evolve. Um, you go for your tier 1 slash tier 2 boots whenever you see fit. So sometimes I get my Q evolve and then I go for tier 1 boots. Sometimes I only get my tier 1 boots after I complete Bay of the Rune King. And sometimes I straight up just don't go for boots at all until I complete my first three um, components, Blade of the Rune King and the Recurve Bow. Uh, but most of the time, it's a good idea to get at least tier 1 boots after your Q Evolve or after your Blade of the Rune King. But you'll, ha you'll have to see the situation in the match and what you feel like. So after the your first three items, you complete Blade of the Rune King. Then you go for the Recurve Bow. Now, after you get the Recurve Bow, this will give you your E Evolve. So pretty much, Kai'Sa, the strategy is simply just to rush your evolutions. That's just the most logical move. And on the final build, um, just to let you guys know, Gladness Grease isn't the boots that I always go for. I actually, most of the time, actually go for Plated Steel Caps or Merc Treads because um, you already got a lot of lifesteal from both the Blade of the Rune King as well as the Hunter Vampirism, so generally you won't need the Gladness Grease. So generally I'll go for um, Plated Steel Caps in general, or if there's a lot of CC, I will go for the Merc Treads, but generally I go for Plated Steel Caps. So after completing Blade of the Rune King, you complete the Infinity Edge, gives you a lot of um, AD injection as well as the crit rate and damage. Then I like to go for Runan's Hurricane, then after that we'll complete Moral Reminder and Garden Angel. Now, Moral Reminder and Garden Angel is interchangeable in terms of position. Most of the time you'll go for Moral Reminder first, but th there are games like the like later on we'll see in the gameplay where the enemy team has very little armor and I actually go for the Garden Angel first. Of course, taking note that you already have one of the components of the Moral Reminder already in your inventory. So that is just something to note. So, the second variation to this build is actually going for the Solari Charge Blade. 
like that. So Solari Charge Blade, if you go for the Charge Blade, you can actually go for Charge Blade before Infinity Edge, or you can also go for Infinity Edge before Charge Blade. It's sort of a little bit of personal preference. So if you go for Charge Blade, then this Recurve Bow wouldn't be a component you get anymore. Instead of Recurve Bow, you will be getting this item called Stinger. So here, you, as you'll, you'll be going for Stinger, which is 300 more gold than the Recurve Bow, but yeah, so this will be your start of game build, as you guys can see below. Just gonna switch it back to recurve bow, cause in general, I prefer the the um, Runan's Hurricane build. So when your GA is down, of course, as usual, you can go for the general normal options of the Death's Dance, which will of course give you even more physical vamp, and of course all the other stats and the cauterized passive mainly. Another item you can consider is a Wits End if. Um, the enemy team has very high uh, AP uh, into a very heavy AP comp and you can actually even go for wits end even sooner than this like as a second or third item if you're into a very heavy um, AP comp and uh, I did actually do a video on that so I will actually also link that up in the cards above all right so aside from from this there is a another option so here I normally go for Runan's Hurricane, your last item, you, instead of going for something defensive, you can actually just go straight up go for Slurry Charge Blade. In case you guys didn't notice, go, Blade of the Rune King is not a crit item, so when we actually go for Infinity Edge and Runan's Hurricane, we, we are only at 50% crit. So if we substitute the Garden Angel with the Slurry Charge Blade, we'll actually be at 100% crit. And of course this works in the opposite direction as, as well, if you go for the Slurry Charge Blade build, uh, when your GA is done, you can actually go for the Runan's Hurricane instead as well to also hit 100% crit. And for some people who really want it, you can straight up just not go for GA at all and just go for the uh, Runan's, Hurricane, uh, Runan's Hurricane and Slurry Charge Blade both. But personally, I prefer to go for the Runan's Hurricane build and then go for GA last. Now you will see in, in this gameplay that we do, that I will actually go for Solari Charge Blade build and I'll explain why but we'll just get into that when we reach the gameplay. But regardless, the runes, normally we go for Conqueror of course, um, best rune for AD carries in general, Hunter Vampirism, just best domination rune for the lifesteal. We go for Hunter Titan into heavy, uh, heavy CC comps and of course Bone Plating uh, into heavy burst comps and we always go for sweet 2 for the uh, sustain for health and mana in lane. Spells we go for either barrier um, or heal depending on what your support takes. If they don't have heal take heal, if they do then take barrier and of course always flash. So without further ado let's quickly jump into the gameplay. Alrighty, so into the gameplay as promised. Now as usual don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and any questions that you guys have can leave it in the comments below where I will uh, be answering it of course. So um, as promised we're going to be discussing um, why, when we take Solari build and when we take Rune and Hurricane build assuming we're not going for both but before that we see a Caitlyn running straight at our face so we're just going to give her uh, an isolated Q and hit her up with 5 auto attacks leaving her on 1 HP. Now I have no idea what the Caitlyn was doing there. She literally just ran straight uh, at us and me and Nami happened to already be in the bush. Um, so yeah, we get a early advantage because of that. Uh, we got the Caitlyn uh, summoner spells, both her summoner spells are flash and her heal. Uh, but she did manage to escape with her life. But regardless, that's uh, extremely free for us, like free summoner spells use is amazing. Alright, so anyways, uh, just before we get into that discussion, obviously we're playing into a Caitlyn Blitzcrank. So playing into a Blitzcrank, you always want to stay behind the minions, which is really obvious. And Caitlyn has the longest range in the game, where, whereas Kai'Sa has the shortest range of all the ADCs, uh, comparable to Vayne and, uh, Vayne and Lucian. So this seems like it's going to be a tough matchup, but Caitlyn is pretty weak to all in. So if Kai'Sa manages to get on top of her, uh, we will be at a advantageous position to say so here she gets caught by the bubble I get hooked in by the blitzcrank which actually ironically helps me get into a better position to kill the Caitlyn and we actually get the kill on the Caitlyn proc the passive on the blitzcrank and get a um, a Q onto the blitzcrank as well and we managed to heal to, to survive the tower shot so overall doing pretty well all right so now that the excitement is over let us discuss so basically you want to go for the Solari Charge Blade when the enemy team is squishy. And you want to go for 
the Rune and Hurricane when the team has a very solid frontline. So now in this game, it's sort of a mixture of both because Zed, Kha'Zix, and Caitlyn are extremely squishy, so you can go for the Solari Charge Blade build. But at the same time, Garen and Blitzcrank is a very solid frontline, so you can also go for the Rune and Hurricane build. So in this match, honestly, you have free choice for both. But in this particular match, I went for the Solari Charge Blade build just because I always use the Rune and Hurricane build because that is my preferred build. And this match, I just wanted to test out how good the Slurry Charge Blade build is to see if it's viable. So the answer is, both builds are viable. It depends on what match you're in. Because with the Runan's Hurricane build, and your pa uh, it, it's able to spread your passive to 3 people at once. And you're, when you proc your passive, you can shred tanks relatively well. Not as well as a Vayne, but you can still shred tanks really, really well. So if they, they have like... If they have like a tank top laner, like like this game, they have a Garen, they have a tank support, like this game, and if like, like let's say they have like a bruiser jungle, like, let's say it, it's like a Olaf or something, this game would be perfect for like a Runelands Hurricane kind of build, where um, you can just spread the the uh, passive onto all three of them and easily just you know um, just um, shred their health basically. Rest, imagine uh, in this game if if this game was Zed, Caitlyn, Kazix, but let's say instead. At top, it was let's say a cannon, and support was let's say a um, Nami or a Janna, a Lulu, some something like that. Basically, it is a full squishy comp. If it's a full squishy comp, always go for the Slurry Charge Blade. If it's a tanky comp, um, maybe two to three tanks. You can go for the Rune and Hurricane. Honestly, in this match, I would normally go for Rune and Hurricane because of the Garen and Blitzcrank, but just because I was testing out the Charge Blade build because there's three squishy targets, I decided to go for the Slurry Charge Blade build. But in this match, I would normally go for the Rune and Hurricane build. Uh, either way, both builds uh, function pretty well. So, here, uh, we actually find ourselves pretty advantageous. We are 1-0-0, um, zero and zero, so hey, we're kind of winning in the lane. Unfortunately, um, the Nami gets hooked. Doesn't really matter because Caitlyn is not close enough to follow up. But yeah, so we are doing pretty well in the lane. Considering we're, we're up against a Caitlyn, uh, we're actually doing really, really well because, as you guys know, Caitlyn is supposed to be very lane dominant, and Kaisa is, especially after her nerfs, supposed to be pretty weak in the laning phase, and she is. Like I have played Kaisa very extensively over the past few days, like at least ten plus matches, and I do feel that Kaisa's laning phase is very significantly weaker after the nerfs. Like the nerfs, honestly, when I went through it in the patch review, I thought it was really minor. Here we dive backline with the out to kill the Zed, find ourselves in kind of a bad position, get hooked by Blitzcrank, we heal and flash out, like surviving by the skin of our teeth. But uh, as I said, going through the patch review, I thought that the nerfs wouldn't affect her too much, I thought she'd still be in a very good spot, but <coughs> turns out that those nerfs did, did affect her a lot and, and really, really brought her down a couple of pegs. And did just, it just goes to show that any small nerf can really affect a champion a lot. Like, I thought that nerf was very small. I really didn't think it would affect Kai'Sa all that much. But it really did. Like, you really felt a lot weaker, like, in her in her laning phase. So really, it, it really does make a difference, is, is all I'll say. So, now her laning phase is a lot weaker, but her late game is actually a lot stronger. Because you have a stronger AD scaling, and you also have more attack speed on your E. So honestly, they kind of just basically... In the grand scheme of things, they nerfed her early game and buffed her late game. So Kaisa is now a late game beast. And before she even got the, these buffs, she was already good in the late game. Like Before she got the late game buffs, when she was still good in the early game, she was already really good in the late game. Just that her early game was unnecessarily strong, which what, which is what made her really strong. Because she really didn't have a weak phase of the game. She was strong early, mid, and late. So she really was just strong all the way around. Here Blitzcrank just gets continuously, he, he ate like 3 isolated Qs and like I pop proc my passive like twice on him so he just straight up just dies. <laughs> but anyways yeah, so enemy, enemy uh, bot lane kind of semi trolling here. I mean they, they aren't actually trolling but but yeah, so but we just destroyed him. Now honestly, there I didn't actually mean to go on her. I just wanted to get an isolated Q but I got rooted by, by her trap. And the only thing you can do when you're rooted is, of course, to cast spells and auto attack. You can't move, but you can do that. So all I was doing is auto attacking her, and lo and behold, I managed to proc my passive and escape with my life. So that was kind of a major oof for the Caitlyn, because that she tried to punish um, my mistake, and it really was a mistake on my part. But it turns out that that she just died instead, and I got away scot free. So really unfortunate for the enemy team.
So you're at this point in time where four and zero on Kaisa in like, like what in like the early to mid game, and honestly by this point in time, if you manage to get this fed in the early to mid game, pretty much the game is over. Like not literally, but like much like if you get a fed vein, like if I was like a vein, like I was four and zero by by seven minutes. Like honestly, the game is 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 pretty much over. Like like you're you're supposed to be a late game champion, but you're so fed in the early game that pretty much. Uh, enemy team is not gonna be able to really do a lot to stop you. So, anyways, we pick up our first completed item, the Blade of the Rune King, of course, and our team is at the Rift Herald fight. So, we have already picked up the top lane tower. The Rave is already at the tier two, so we're just gonna join in the fight. Here, I intend I was originally inten intending to ult over, but I realized that I'm gonna be ulting into like an entire team. So instead, I just walk over and manage to kill the Kazix. But unfortunately, I get hooked by Blitzcrank, ulted by the Zed, and instantly deleted. So. Uh, good job on me for deleting the Kha'Zix because he was the jungler and obviously he's the most important in a Rift Herald fight for the enemy team. But unfortunately, the uh, bad on me for getting hooked by the Blitzcrank and therefore getting uh, letting Zed just out me and, and um, freely hit everything on me. So regardless, my team win the overall team fight and my team do secure the Rift Herald. So all's good there in, in overall. So here we have respawn. Obviously, the the top lane is pushed out, and there is a wave actually stacking in top. Um, so we don't really need to go there. We have a bit of downtime. Obviously, Twister Fates farming mid. Fiora's pushing bot, so we don't really have anywhere to get farmed without uh, overextending by a significant amount. So I'm just gonna farm the wolves, and the dragon is up. So we of course do want to go for the dragon, of course. So here we're just gonna check for enemy vision. Turns out there is no enemy vision. I'm going to just walk up to secure the. Or I was going to walk up to secure the, the push, but then I saw Kha'Zix in the tribal, so I'm going to have to be a little bit more wary. Because if I'm isolated, Kha'Zix has, is going to have a pretty easy time um, killing me. Alright, so we're just going to secure the mid lane priority. Really good uh, Herald drop by the Jarvan. Of course, we always know that dropping Herald when Dragon is up is always a good idea, because enemy team is forced to um, try to deal with the Herald in the mid lane, lest they lose a tower and a half. So here Zed and Blitzcrank decides to go in. I'm just staying back trying to shoot whoever I can. Of course my Conqueror by now fully stacked. I thought that Q would kill the Kha'Zix but he lives on 1 HP. I thought of ulting in to kill him but I would be ulting into 5 uh, enemy uh, enemy champions. So that wouldn't really be the best idea because I, I even if I get the kill which I definitely will get the kill on the Kha'Zix because he already blew his ult and everything. I will get the kill on the Kha'Zix but I likely will die as well. And honestly as a fed ADC versus a uh, like 0 and 3 assassin. I don't really think that that's a good trait to, to trade my life for the Kha'Zix. Of course there is an argument about dragon being up but then again it's only a mountain dragon so it's not the end of the world if Kha'Zix survives and like smite steals a dragon or something. Uh, I think that Kha'Zix stealing the dragon is probably a better outcome than me giving uh, the enemy team my life. So that is the, the kind of logic there. Alright so here we're going on to the Zed. I kind of messed up my ult there because I meant to ult closer to the Z so I'm bit more in range. Instead because of my folly I eat a Z out and um, Z puts me low enough to get to get killed by the Caitlyn out. So really I kind of messed up the mechanics there. Uh, I should have ulted closer to the Z but I accidentally ulted to the very edge away from the Z so that was kind of a mistake there. I uh, haven't messed up the Kai'Sa out in like many 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 games so kind of got a little bit overconfident there and just randomly just ulted at the wrong position. But Yeah so anyways uh, regardless, my team is going to secure the dragon, Jarvan in particular, and instead the rest of my team is going to be pushing down mid, getting the tier 2 mid. So overall, my team is just winning all across the board, like pretty much, um, yeah, pretty much all across the board, we're just winning in general. So this this game really going well. Team finally secures the dragon, of course. Jarvan isn't the fastest, uh, fastest dragon taker, so... Yeah, so here we have already got the both the E Evolve and the Zanya's Arglas. Zanya's Arglas, of course, is going to be very useful against like Zed and Kha'Zix in particular. And yeah, so something I actually forgot to mention just now about the Solari build versus the Runan's build is the style you play Kaiser. So in both in both styles you can play front to back and diving, but uh, the Runan's Hurricane build you normally want to play front to back and just attack the front line to shred their health. Whereas with the Charge Blade build, you have a lot of single target bursts, especially with your crits and your Q. So 
in that that uh, build, like this build I'm currently going for now, you have a lot better backline burst potential. So you can always play Kaisa in an assassin style way where you dive into the backline and assassinate um, a target, normally like the enemy ADC or the enemy like mid laner. Uh, of course, it's very risky to do so regardless of what build you go because um, that normally will get you killed which is why it's good to have a GA or like a stasis to try to survive after you do that or, or just try to run away in general but yeah that that is of course the option on Kaisa and we have already done that like just now actually like in the first dragon fight where we dived all the way to the back to kill the Zed and we nearly died but we managed to escape from the skin of, by the skin of our teeth this is a good example of a front to back kind of team fight I'm just staying behind Oh, I was staying behind and firing at whoever I can, but now there's only one enemy left, which is Caitlyn. I'm actually going in for the chase. But yeah, so there are two kind of styles to play Kaiser: the front to back and the assassin style. But personally, front to back is a lot safer. But sometimes you need to play Kaiser assassin style in order to to win the team fight. Like sometimes, for example, I'm just gonna give you an example where let's say the, the enemy Caitlyn in this game was ten and zero. The rest of the enemy team is. Like, not feeding but doing alright. Let's say everybody else is even, like 1 and 1, 3 and 3, 5 and 5 kind of thing. So, Caitlyn is carrying her team. Uh, if you were someone else, let's say a Zaya or, or like, um, any, like, basically other ADCs, majority of other ADCs, it's very hard for you to get into the backline without just simply dying. But with Kaisa, the moment you get a mark on the enemy Caitlyn, you can dive straight into the backline like at your max range out. Get an isolated Q on the Caitlyn assuming there is no minion wave and assuming that no, there's no one standing right on top of her like any of her teammates and probably auto attack her once or twice. That will probably kill her and then you can press E, go in this and run away uh, like an assassin. So you can play Kai'Sa assassin style and sometimes in these kind of matches where there's one fat squishy member in the backline, you need uh, an assassin to kill her and you can be that assassin yourself despite the fact you're playing an ADC so Kai'Sa can be played as an assassin but generally not recommended except in specific scenarios here we're gonna have to play front to back again so here just hitting whoever we can in this case it's the Blitzcrank but we do relatively high damage to the Blitzcrank and he um, so, so, uh, he actually dies there but not to me so here Zed is in the back line as well he's trying to do the same thing but he dies to me instead Alright, so Kha'Zix spotted walking close. Kha'Zix actually AFK, so uh, probably got a bad connection or something. Eats the bubble, and here I snipe the Caitlyn before she manages to on me. Now, Caitlyn, honestly, really uh, dumb move there. I think she was probably just button mashing when she realized she was about to die, and she button mashed her ult. Her ult actually roots her to the ground, and therefore I get a 100% uh, uh, W. Like, I have no way I'm missing that because she rooted herself with her ultimate, so. I get a free W onto her and therefore manage to get the last hit on her or the kill rather I should say on her. Now we because of what we uh, because of the team fight victory because of the ace uh, we manage to get a free Baron and we can recall pick up the Solari Charge Blade and we're really 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 good right now where we are we have board we have IE we have Solari Charge Blade seventy five percent crit all three of our core items and in this case the enemy team is all squishy. The only one with like any form or form of armor is pretty much just the Blitzcrank. Even the Garen has gone for like ta uh, more damage that compared to to um, tankiness. So I'm just going to go straight for GA instead of going for instead of going for uh, Moral Reminder first because I don't really feel like I need the Moral Reminder at, at, the, at in this particular match here. I actually expend a lot of resources, resources just to kill one Blitzcrank, which is my ult and my flash. So, really, that wasn't really the best move by me. But I just wanted—I mean, I just wanted to punish the overex and the Blitzcrank. But overall, I think that that was a way better trade for them than than me because, like, I'm very fat at the moment, and expending my my flash heal and ult to kill one measly Blitzcrank is definitely not worth on my end. But since I already committed to it, I, I you know I had to commit. To it. If I commit like ult and like heal and I don't get the kill because I don't flash it really becomes even less worse so flashing for the kill is logical there but really I shouldn't even have altered him I shouldn't have committed to that kill I thought I could kill him a lot faster but it, it wasn't the case so we still have Baron buff active we're gonna just push down um, the bot lane here the enemy team is really really behind at this point in time we're over 10k gold ahead of them at this point like we're winning on all fronts and really I'm not too scared of anybody aside from like Zed and Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix even when he's uh, like feeding, uh, he still can kill me easily if I'm isolated, which in this case over here I am. Zed likewise can just ult me instantly for the kill. Uh, Caitlyn actually comes in. 
I'm actually gonna try to kill Caitlyn. I do get the kill on Caitlyn with my ult. Trying to move away from the Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix comes in on me. I'm isolated. I Zhonyas. And I try to invis my way out. Kha'Zix Zhonyas. Zed flashes over to kill me. But uh, the Fiora manages to trade the kill onto the Zed. And then she goes in for the double kill onto the Kha'Zix. Goes back. Goes for the Blitzcrank. Maybe a triple kill perhaps. Uh, nope. Twisted Fate picks up that kill. And only the Garen is left alive. Fiora high tailing it out of there, running from the Garen. Uh, but anyways, we already secured the top in him just now. When we were picking up Baron, Fiora uh, was actually picking up the in him, and here we can pick up the mid in him and pretty much just end the game because Garen cannot defend by himself. So, really nice. Uh, I wouldn't say clean game on 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 uh, Kaiser. We did make a couple of mistakes like overcommitting on the Blitzcrank, like um, messing up the alt on the Z. A few mistakes here and there, but overall we still did really really well. And still a really good showing of Kaiser. So, anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm gonna leave you guys with the stats, which is already rolling as usual. Thank you guys for watching the video, and goodbye.